national movements in this country begin to rise in a way that had never happened. You couldn't be living during that period of time and not be impacted by the Black Panther Party. The primary objective of the Panther Party is to establish revolutionary political power for black people. We want freedom, the power to determine the destiny of our own community. Even though I was born in Puerto Rico, most of us were born here and we weren't going to take the kind of abuse that they were heaping on our parents. We were going to insist on respect. I was approached by Mickey Melendez. He had grown up in East Harlem and he played baseball with my two cousins. So gradually we started meeting, trying to figure out what we could do to improve the situation of the Puerto Rican community. One of the things that we do all the time was read the Black Panther paper. And there was this announcement of the Puerto Rican organization there, and it was called the Young Lords. We met with one of the leaders of the Young Lords in Chicago, Jose Chacha Jimenez. And he gave us the go ahead to start the East Coast wing of the Young Lords. <laughs> The Young Lords didn't drop from the sky. One day, and all of this happened. We were part of a continuum of history, of a legacy that had gone before us. For that revolution within the United States, we see ourselves hooking up with, with black people, with Native Amer Americans, with Asians, and with other Latinos to form a united front as oppressed people to wage against the real enemy. I started out as a cadre in the Young Lords in 1969. I became deputy minister of education. I was a co-founder of the Women's Caucus. I was the first chairman of the Young Lords Party. We are ideological in that we believe in the principles of socialism, in that we believe in cooperative effort, in that we believe in, in unified struggle. It's all about pride, it's all about community, it's all about being together. I was one of the co-founders of the Young Lords organization in New York City. <laughs> 